Ni do shadzi nakbaga o madashi mia edash heads ma be sigids ma zigirads nakbaga o. My name is Ruth Anna Buffalo, and I'm from Mandari, North Dakota, which is located on the Fort Berthold Indian Reservation. I am Mandan, Hidadza, and Apache, and I am a member of the Dripping Earth Clan. Why I chose to run for office this year um, as a Native American woman, um, there were a lot of uh, current events that led up to uh, me agreeing to sign up or you know, actually run for office. But a lot of those, um, so a lot of small events kind of led up to this point in my life to where I felt I, I seen a lot of things happen throughout our state and now as a mother having to see uh, my children w go through the same things that I went through at a young age, I felt that our voice needed to be shared across the state and I felt like it was a daunting task but I felt up to the challenge and I felt that this was a way to show the entire state of North Dakota that we are educated and we are good people as, as Native Americans. And so I felt um, it was one way to help reach the masses. So as a Native woman, it, it did seem like a, a huge task at hand to try to reach the entire state of North Dakota, meaning all people uh, within North Dakota, Native and non-Native. But um, at an early age, I, um, I did attend school off of the reservation and uh, made a lot of friends and things, you know, excelled in the classroom and uh, through sports. Um, so in a sense, I was kind of already an ambassador at a young age, but uh, as an adult, I still see how we are more alike than we are different in so many ways, being in, from a small town, being uh, rural. I mean, I feel like the whole entire state of North Dakota is rural. Um, so just kind of translating or being able to figure out a way to reach, connect with people was very important. Um, my dad was in the military. Um, I was raised by a single mother, but so just having that strong work ethic, I felt um, helped me to engage with a lot of voters across the state. Well, I ran my, my campaign on a very limited budget. Um, we use social media a lot. Um, so we, we, we ran a strong online campaign, um, but outside of social media, um, I jumped at every opportunity to travel across the state, uh, whether it was to support other candidates or to um, just try to cover as much ground uh, as possible in one day. There were times if I had something out in Minot, <clears throat> I would stop at Spirit Lake and Turtle Mountain on my way back to um, Fargo. So really just trying to make, make use of the time, having <laughs> tried to have good ta time management. But um, so yeah, just really trying to not sit idle and um, take every opportunity I could to get out there. Get three eyed. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <clears throat> geez. <laughs> so why, where, how I found the strength and stamina to run a um, pretty um, hard campaign was it stemmed from my family um, and from from just thinking of all the people who whose voices have never been heard or, you know, people who've always been ignored or, or left out of the process. But uh, thinking of my family, my grandparents, um, and the struggles that they had to overcome um, years ago. And so just really thinking of our, our history, um, that's really what, what drove me in, in seeing that this was an opportunity for, for a Native American woman to get out there and to, to break through barriers um, and to really to really uh, foster relationships and to to let everybody know, you know that we across North Dakota that we are more alike than we're different. I I polled higher than the other Native American candidates that ran in the statewide race this year, um, and I it's kind of hard to say why why or how that happened exactly. I mean, without knowing, because I'm I like data too, and I I still have to plot out all the different counties and kind of cross-check, you know, the voter turnout across the state. That's one thing that I want to want to do, but um, 
I just, every waking moment of the day, I, I tried to get out there. Um, and we had a, we had a strong uh, online presence um, <clears throat> and a strong social media presence, I, I believe. Um, so that was kind of one avenue that we tried to uh, build upon. Um, so my family was really a, a huge part of um, my campaign. Like my mom would uh, drive her, tra her truck and pull a flatbed trailer onto it and meet us in different places. So it was, it was definitely a family effort. <laughs> the day after the election, um, it was disappointing, of course, but I still just... How I was raised by my mom, you know, we were never allowed to to sit and mope. You know, we always had to stay busy and things, and so always trying to um, problem solve or figure out a way to to rebuild or regroup. And so, coming up with the idea of starting a political action committee for Native American women to run for office um, is something that I am going to continue to pursue that until it it happens. Um, why? Because more Native American women need to run for office. Um, a lot of people throughout the state of North Dakota and nationally were very, uh, very happy. We got a lot of good reception this year, you know, from people across the nation saying, wow, there's three Natives running for office in North Dakota. That's never happened before. But it's great, but I still feel that there should be at least 50 people 50 Native women running for office uh, in each election. So really trying to <clears throat> not just accept that three Native candidates ran for office this year and be okay with it. No, I'm, I'm not okay with it. I want to keep continuing to rebuild and work on this. Um, this Continue this line of work in getting our voice to the table um, because it's time and I believe truly that we are what our ancestors dreamt of and prayed for. And so I, as a Native, Native American woman who ran for office this year, I feel very inspired by the people across the state who, who were very good to me, non-Native and Native, and the, short, the stories that they, they shared with me were really, um, really heartfelt because <clears throat> a lot of people would get into tears. Um, I spoke with uh, Native elders in, in Turtle Mountain and they were, um, pretty touched that Native women were running for office in our state. So getting back to why I want to start a Native American Women Political Action Committee, it's to continue to build upon, just to build a stronger North Dakota. <laughs> I believe there are parallels between running for office and um, being a former athlete, um, just that competitive nature, but also I believe um, the skills that you learn from being an athlete really translate or carry over to the classroom, to the workplace, to your everyday life. And one, one huge um, factor that I am thankful to have learned while playing sports is uh, teamwork and just sportsmanship. Um, so even though the, the results didn't go in my favor, but I still um, you still have to move on and think about how, how, how can you improve upon what, what you just did. So yeah, there's a lot of parallels, I believe, um, from being a former athlete in, say, for example, basketball. Um, just always going as hard as you can, you know, like leaving it all out on the floor. And I used to coach basketball um, at a junior college, tribal college. That's what I would tell the girls too, like, you know, when you leave practice and when you, when you leave the gym after a game, you should, you should literally be almost like crawling out of the gym because you gave it all you got, you know, so to speak. So kind of translates to um, my approach throughout the campaign. But I also have a health and wellness background, so that self-care piece is really important too. You know, you have to try to keep that good balance in there or else you'll get sick and lose your voice. <laughs> No, <laughs> but um, the crazy thing too is the other two opponents for the insurance commissioner, they, they are both basketball players. Um, uh, the Republican candidate who won, he um, 
had played overseas and I had met him after a, um, the Jamestown parade. I got introduced to him and we shook hands and took a picture together. Um, or I asked him if I could take a picture together and people were like, oh, I don't think you want to take a picture with him. And they were kind of like, you took a picture with the enemy. And I was like, I just feel like we're all human beings and um, we should really uh, not be afraid to reach out across party lines and things. And so we were, I joked with him and I said, hey, we should, we should have a fundraiser and um, do like a game of horse or, or a one-on-one, -on -one, you know. And, and he agreed to it, but we just got so busy over the campaign season that we didn't ever pursue that. <laughs> John Godfrey, I'm still waiting for that game of horse, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> okay.